Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's threat snapshot on Bloodhound. So this tool probably needs no introduction, but for those unfamiliar, this is really a defensive tool that helps you enumerate your Windows Active Directory environment, and it uses graph theory to uncover hidden misconfigurations that probably wouldn't be found during a normal audit. It's a very powerful defensive tool that also coincidentally is used by the red teamers, the offensive folks, um, and it, because again, it's so good at uncovering those misconfigurations, which can be abused to escalate privileges and gain access to other parts of the network. Uh, Bloodhound being an open source tool, freely available. This has been out for several years now. You can easily run this in your own environment. Um, attackers can also run it in your environment for you. And ultimately it's really good at uncovering a lot of those, you know, misconfigurations with an active directory. So it wouldn't be a Bloodhound, uh, you know, talk without talking about lists and graph theories. And I think some of the original crux of where this came from, I can probably be attributed back to John Lambert. And um, he's a distinguished fellow over at Microsoft. And he had this really good post back in 2015. Um, Defenders think in list, attackers think in graphs. As long as this is true, attackers will win. And that's, you know, for so long in our industry, all we've as defenders have thought about our lists. Again, think of, you know, firewall ACLs and these long lists of rules. Um, really, again, what Bloodhound is doing is it's looking at those, you know, graph assets. So, you know, you can see that cluster here and there's that one path where I can go from a terminal server to a high value asset. And again, these are the sort of things that Bloodhound can enumerate. So taking a look a little bit more, what are some of the things it can enumerate? Um, so Bloodhound, uh, obviously there's a PowerShell version for the collector. There is the Sharphound, which is the C-Sharp version. Bloodhound proper, the tool itself, is going to live on, um, again, your machine remotely where you're going to take the output from the collector and you're going to be able to analyze that in a graph database and, and UI. So really we're going to be focusing on the collector tool itself because that's what's going to leave the forensic artifacts in your network. And there's lots of different collection methods. Um, there's the plain old vanilla default. You can do a full audit. You can only audit the DC or computer accounts, um, quite a few different things. And there is this really good um, chart here in the documentation that I'm gonna kind of zoom in on too. Um, tells you again, when you're running Sharphound or Bloodhound with the collection methods, what sort of things are covered with default versus all versus DC only. And you're going to already see some of the things that's going to be enumerating. So Active Directory trusts in different containers, groups, user objects, permissions. Can they RDP? Can they use PowerShell remoting? Um, are they a local administrator? Do they have a you know, service account or other items? And you know these are those things that are going to be queried for and enumerated. And ultimately, you can use Bloodhound to see those relationships, see those misconfigurations and, and possible attack paths. So why don't we dig into it? Um, we'll go into Snap Attack here, and probably the best way to dive into Bloodhound is just do a quick search, um, land on the collection here, and this is some curated content around Bloodhound. So a couple of threat intelligence articles talking about the tool, numerous different threats um, captured here. So we've gone through each different collection mechanism, whether it's looking for groups, ACLs, you know, just the default connection, um, running Invoke Bloodhound, the PowerShell connector, um, lots of different ways that we can run this. And again, that's because we talk about robustness and being able to you know, have our detections um, run up against a lot of variety of different attacks. And that's really something that we seek to, to really test out all the methods. So if you run it in different you know, modes, different configurations, you know, if you use the stealth option or some of these other flags, what sort of things is that going to change? And that's the stuff that we want to study and analyze here. And of course, we also have various detections too for Bloodhound. Um, we're going to dive in and take a look at one of these threats here. Um, so this one uh, we'll talk about here. This is a regular Bloodhound execution, pretty vanilla. Um, I could spend a full hour if we wanted to dive into all of the different options here. Uh, but we're going to have a defensive mechanism here with decoy tokens, um, also called canary tokens. Basically, um, we are going to configure a couple of different user accounts and groups within Active Directory, and we're going to set an audit policy on those for whenever they're read. Um, there are commercial tools available, but this is one of the better detection methods uh, for Bloodhound activity. So focusing not so much on that part, but focusing on really Bloodhound here, we've got a Windows domain controller, we've got an attacker machine here. 
um, painting this in the uh, you know kill chain scenario let's say that I got initial access onto your machine I'm a lowly user but I have a domain user account I can you know enumerate Active Directory and interrogate a lot of these things even with a valid domain user to see what sort of privileges there are so you could be running it um, on a compromised machine. Um, maybe, again, if we're going back to a previous snapshot, I'm using Chisel, and I could be using this on my own machine, so I'm not gonna leave any of the artifacts um, of you know dropping Bloodhound or Sharphound to, to disk that would be there. So a couple of different ways that this could be launched. Again, Bloodhound itself is not really a malicious tool. Um, it's, again, just gonna be asking normal questions of your Active Directory environment and enumerating that data. It's not performing any exploits. It's not actually performing any attacks. Um, again, this sort of activity itself is not bad. It's really what you can do with those and those misconfigurations that you have. So um, I could hop over to the domain controller, but again, there is nothing interesting going on here. There's just a lot of you know LDAP queries and Active Directory things going on in the background. Um, for a very large Active Directory environment, this could take a long time. Um, this is a little bit smaller of an AD environment here because this is a lab, so we don't have as many objects to interrogate, but still enough that we can get a representative sample. Um, we're going to see a little flurry here of some activity. We'll talk about that in a, a minute. Um, but that's Bloodhound that ran, that performed the collection. There are going to be some files that are output here with the results, which again, you would take back and then read into the, the, um, the GUI there so you could analyze that in the graph database. Um, itself here, this is pretty boring. Um, you know, if we're looking at our process graph, we launched Sharphound from CMD. It's not kicking off other processes. Um, there is some, again, other activity there if we were going to be looking at, you know, files created, network events, things of that nature. But uh, by and large, this is a pretty self-contained executable. So really getting into the meat of this, how would I hunt for this? How would I detect Bloodhound? What sort of things can I do to defend myself? Um, obviously, if you have endpoint detection response EDR tools, you could take a look at, um, you know, obviously process creation type events. Um, so this here is a community detection looking for, again, Bloodhound, Sharphound with some of the various um, collection strings, methods, and other command line arguments. Um, this certainly works, uh, but again, if I'm an attacker, I could very easily start renaming some of these things, or again, I just launched Bloodhound without um, any command line arguments with the default there. So this would be trivial to evade, but again, it's something that you can have in your detection library. Again, we always talk about detection in depth and having um, multiple different detection opportunities and, and again, have a better chance of being able to detect the threat. A uh, little better detection here also from the community is the Bloodhound collection files. So this one here is looking for a lot of those output files that are gonna be there. So. Uh, if it's going to be enumerating computers, containers, domains, group policy objects, groups, you're going to see a lot of these files that are going to be created. And again, it's going to be in that folder with the timestamp and the underscore. So those are generally going to be pretty rare in an environment. Um, you can certainly search for those. Um, even if I, as an attacker, renamed Sharphound to some other you know, tool, um, with I know it is open source. You could certainly, as an attacker, modify these. but um, most attackers were lazy, so if these aren't modified, you would be able to, um, again, find these files that are being dropped to disk. So that would be a good opportunity. Uh, another detection opportunity here. Um, if you have something at the network level, again, think access to, you know, Zeek data or PCAP, um, or you're monitoring uh, LDAP traffic. Um, taking a look for, you know, large LDAP queries, um, particularly when it's not something that normally has a large amount of LDAP traffic to it. So again, this detection would need a little bit of tuning, but um, if we are looking for, you know, I mean, domain controllers, obviously, if they're going to be having sync operations, talking to each other, that's going to have a lot of traffic. But if I'm a, you know, lonely workstation here off to the side, and I don't normally have a large volume of LDAP traffic, or in particular, large queries, that could be something that could stick out. So being able to enumerate that at the network level certainly works as well. Again, probably the best section and the best detections are when we're gonna move over away from the endpoint and network level and actually have additional configurations on the domain controller and additional audit logs here. So um, if you have configured your audit logs, if you're gonna be looking at um, Windows event code 4662, um, this is looking for um, interacting and reading certain objects within Active Directory. 
so we can see you know some of these attacks here or some of these you know logs that are detecting this um, this is again detecting um, a domain user you know enumerating active directory but there's definitely other opportunities here using this 4662 event log um, as we mentioned there is the opportunity to create uh, you know canary tokens or decoy tokens uh, this is probably one of my favorite ways to detect Bloodhound. And again, it's also great for detecting red team activity in general. Um, if you have really juicy misconfigured accounts, again, you know, named administrator, make it look like it's a domain admin, you know, overprivileged accounts that have access to things, um, they're generally going to be discovered and abused. So um, you can scroll down here, um, really good resource in this blog that talks about how to set up and create these decoy objects how to make sure that you are logging, again, when these objects are being read. Um, there are commercial tools that you can use to you know, deploy canaries, but this is something that you can also create for free in Active Directory right now. Um, so they'll talk about how to do that, and then you'll be able to see any time that those are read, you know, if I keep scrolling down. Um, so this is a decoy object here on a group, so it's gonna look for any time that this group is read a decoy computer account. So if you wanted to set up a fake domain controller or something juicy, this is a decoy user account. So again, that could be a, a permissioned, you know, overprivileged account that has an enticing name. Um, even if it's not enticing, again, Bloodhound is gonna be enumerating really everything it can and almost likely indiscriminately. So these sort of things that won't be read in normal, you know, day-to-day -day traffic, because again, they're not valid, not used accounts, will certainly be picked up by a lot of these scanners and other tools. So this is definitely a great way to detect that. And again, we have the corresponding detection here in Snap Attack, which again, you would need to modify with the objects that you create, but this would be a really good way to detect activity to those decoy accounts. Also, again, in the spirit of, you know, Sun Tzu and again, know thy enemy, know thyself. Um, another way that you can defend against Bloodhound is to run Bloodhound. Um, you can do that with a free edition. Uh, even better, you can use their Bloodhound Enterprise Edition, uh, which has additional features and makes it easier to find those attack paths and remediate those. Um, couple that with Snap Attack Enterprise Edition, and you'd be able to deploy additional detections against Bloodhound and other threats. So that's our snapshot. That's Bloodhound. Definitely check out the collection and check out the content. Hope you enjoy this series, and we'll see you next time.